We're managing multiple sites for other partners and those sites are actively growing. So we're, they're highly successful. Our boots on the ground, our, our uh, leadership, our, our people um, are bringing operational expertise to multiple sites. So this, this is growing and it's, it's, it's been a wonderful project. Today, let's talk about Accelerated by Compass. Accelerated by Compass is the premier accelerator for Bitcoin mining sites at any stage of development. And in order to do this, I am joined by the Chief Mining Officer, Shannon Squires, and our Director of Business Development and Marketing, Curtis Harris. Curtis, I'd like to throw you the mic first, and if you could just give us an overview of what is Accelerated by Compass. Jared, thank you for being here. Shannon, it's uh, fabulous to be on a, on a call and a podcast with you, a conversation like this today. Accelerated by Compass is a managed services offering that we created after doing a significant amount on, of due diligence on a wide variety of sites for our own uh, potential needs. And then as we were evaluating sites, we were realizing that um, not every site was right for Compass and its exact um, business needs, but we were seeing these fantastic opportunities. We had gained a lot of in-house expertise and realized that through operations or site procurement, infrastructure, construction, a wide variety of managed services that we actually had a tremendous amount of value to bring the Bitcoin mining ecosystem. So working with CJ Burnett, our chief revenue officer, we built this full stack of managed services and called it Accelerated by Compass, ABC. Shannon, uh, thanks for hopping on. Curtis, thank you for that. Would you like to add anything, Shannon, on to what Curtis said? I mean, I think Curtis kind of uh, hit the nail on the head. Basically, you know, we're doing this full time. And then because we cater to clients in a hosting environment and specifically deal with both retail clients and institutional level clients, we realized that just because a site isn't ideal for us, it's probably just fine for a prop miner or someone else uh, in this space. Maybe the size is a constraint, like we're dealing with in a certain megawatt or they need something larger or smaller. And so it may not fit our needs, but it's going to fit someone else's. Uh, one of the biggest problems in industry is if you're going to site, uh, source a site, is that you go out there and there's a bunch of brokers and there's a bunch of headaches and you never really know where you're starting. So being able to look at projects that are already scoped out so you know, hey, do I need a special use permit? Do I already have a feeder to the site? What voltage is coming to the site? Is the land leased? Is it sold? Is the you know, electrical service agreement already signed? Is it transferable? And all these pieces that you have to kind of dig out have already been dug out and they're ready for you to take a look at and then you know be able to make decisions on the action quickly. Jerry, I'll, I'll add to that. We we also realized that we were standing on both sides of two different you know portions of deal flow. We had our large customers and other customers of uh, you know potential clients of a large size that were looking for attractive sites, and then we were seeing sites and doing you know significant due diligence on them, but they for whatever reason they weren't an exact fit for us. And then trying to solve that problem of being a service provider in a two sided marketplace, as as a we grew our operational expertise. That's where we figured out that there's an aha moment here is that we could bring um, operation value in addition to site procurement, site sourcing, and helping both parties come together. Curtis, you kind of read my mind because that was going to be my next question, just strictly from curiosity, looking at Accelerated by Compass from 30,000 feet, which is how did it come about, right? Was it market demand or was it an opportunity that Compass saw? And it sounds like it was almost a mix of both of those. It, it was entirely a mix. We, um, you know, we're, we're head down and building for our customers. And what that meant was solving our own operational challenges. We've figured out that when we can deploy our own leads, and in fact, you just had a wonderful conversation with Jeff Bryant, our site lead at one of our uh, Ohio sites. When we can deploy our own technicians on sites, we're maintaining fantastic uptime. 97.8 is our current percentage where we're at on sites that we manage ourselves. So we had really figured out how to solve operational challenges. And that was our main focus. Uh, Shannon and I worked together very closely with others on the team looking for site opportunities that would be the right place for us to deploy our customers. And through that vast amount of research, learning, education, that's when we realized that we actually had both sides there. We, we had customer demand looking for sites, and then we had you know a significant amount of experience to bring uh, the, the industry. Excellent. And 
I want to talk about the services that are actually offered because there are four prominent services that are offered in the managed services under Accelerated by Compass, or as Curtis says, the ABCs now of Bitcoin mining. And they are, I'm going to read them off, procurement and construction, ops and management, energy optimization, and then monetizing infrastructure. So I'd love to go through each of those just to get an idea of how they fit into the managed services and the overall umbrella of Accelerated by Compass. So Shannon, I guess I'll throw you the mic. Do you want to pick one of those and go and we'll just go back and forth? And now I'm actually putting you guys in the hot seat a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know which one you want to start with. Uh, Curtis is probably better at articulating them as individual products. Uh, in general, um, basically, we can we, we already do everything that's needed. We've already accomplished and uh, fought through all of the potential problems. Like we've already dealt with a plethora of sites around the U.S., Canada, and every aspect of this. This is the reason we took the from you know, dealing primarily or solely with third-party operated sites and third-party managed sites and you know, transitioned into sites where we own the infrastructure but maybe don't manage it and then eventually into sites where we manage it and then finally sites where we manage it and own the infrastructure and then into you know, you know, eventually you know, full stack where we've done everything from build from the ground up, right? And doing that with our partners as well. So as far as the services, everything in there is something that we can then offer to someone because we've already went through the trials and simulations to figure that out. So whether that's the operations piece, so if maybe you have a site, maybe you've secured containers and you got this thing but it's not running like you want it to, uh, you know, network build out, troubleshooting, actual go to the operations, hire locally, train technicians. Yeah. So as far as like breaking down each piece, probably best to get Curtis the scoop on that. Curtis? You know, uh, one of the things, I'll, I'll, I'll keep the conversation going and I'll speak into energy optimization. Uh, Shannon is an energy expert. I wanted to work in Bitcoin. My, my background was construction, civil engineering, zoning, land use, regulatory approval, um, uh, hard asset infrastructure construction. So I was drawn to mining. Um, Shannon's been exposed to Bitcoin mining for many years beyond me and has a real fundamental ability to break down energy profiles in all the different markets, whether it's ERCOT or PJM or SPP or TVA, um, understanding the energy markets and really the complexities of all of the different tariffs and rate structures. And that's a crucial element to powering a Bitcoin mine is understanding your, your energy profile. And then who are the partners that you're working with? Are you, you know, how are you buying your electricity? If you think you can just, uh, you know, uh, plug in and go turn on, you know, a five or 10 or 20 megawatt mine without having many layers of interactions with the utility providers in between, you're wrong. It's a complex system and having the experience to navigate that. So energy optimization, I think, is, is something that comes, Shannon might say that I'm better at articulating it, but it actually comes from his expertise in breaking down um, uh, those various programs and understanding them, as well as the substantial relationships that we built in the industry. So we're currently mining with about 165 megawatts of our own infrastructure. Um, we're, we're all, you know, this accelerated by Compass, even though we're having a nice conversation about it today, um, it's actually full up and running. We're managing multiple sites for other partners, and those sites are actually growing. So we're they're highly successful. Our boots on the ground, our our uh, leadership, our our people um, are bringing operational expertise to multiple sites. So this this is growing, and it's 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 been a wonderful project. Um, you had mentioned like the four different categories. What's one What's one that you'd like to learn a little bit more about? And we'll 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 try to shed some light. Okay, this is easy. And I was going, Curtis. You were literally reading my mind. I looked down this list and I was actually working with one of my colleagues and we were looking at this, this is a long time ago, and we weren't exactly sure what monetizing infrastructure means. Because I think, at least for me looking at it, that was the one where I was just had more questions than answers. Yeah, there's probably two pieces to that. So one is, as far as monetizing infrastructure, there's a bunch of people out there that have probably put together a Bitcoin mining farm and they're looking for a way to exit that site. So whether that was they may have put together a site and filled it full of old generation miners, and it's time for them to either make the decision to upgrade the miners or offload the site. Um, another instance is they may be a hosting company in which they're hosting other people's miners, have contracts coming to the end. They put a lot of work in and they're looking to get that out. Um, or they actually just run around developing sites and they don't have a marketplace to be able to get those sites to the public. So that's kind of one avenue of uh, monetizing infrastructure. The next one is going to be uh, like actually selling assets. So whether that's, hey, I got transformers, containers, 
quick here, you know, different pieces of electrical infrastructure they may have been purchased, used, unused, being able to put that into a marketplace. And then the last piece, uh, so I guess there's three, or there's probably a lot of ways to articulate this. Um, as far as uh, monetizing the infrastructure is, uh, if there's excess space, if there's ever a time in which there are not miners plugged into a rack, right, then you're, you're kind of missing out on you know, some sort of revenue generation from your facility and being able to work with client, companies and clients to be able to fill that space. So as Compass being a hosting provider and focusing on our clients first, we're always trying to find the best places to put miners for our clients. Being able to fill racks with miners selling turnkey in our marketplace is kind of a, a great scenario. Or you have a mining farm that's built, it's running, you have miners in there, and you're looking to essentially offload those miners. We can offload them running and hacking. So uh, you already have 100 miners, 1,000 miners, 5,000 miners hit and wrap. Uh, we can actually work in a contract for you to be able to offload those in our marketplace. And you can see marketplace listings on our website where people can go buy and purchase miners that come with a hosting contract that are up and running. I'll, I'll add two more things to that. Um, you know, one, I'll speak about, um, you know, generation asset owners and developers, as well as people who currently have um, infrastructure. So think of a, a mobile substation or a series of transformers. If you um, have equipment that you're not sure what to do with, whether you want to you want to sell it or frankly, if you need to buy it as well, um, we have real expertise in sourcing infrastructure and understanding that you know you can order something from China and what do you get, or you can pay for something local that's already on the ground somewhere and what do you get. But who's your partner on the other side of that? Who has the expertise to know if that's right for your facility? Um, Shannon and our team are those experts. So we, we, we actually are able to stand in the middle of infrastructure uh, procurement as well as, as resale. Um, we bring a lot of value with knowledge and expertise. But then I also mentioned um, generation asset owners and developers. Although we're not currently working for um, you know, say a solar farm, a person who owns a solar farm, we're actually behind the meter at a, at a couple different interesting locations. We we have um, good relationships with renewable energy developers and Bitcoin mining is a fantastic resource for them. We're a large flexible load. We're able to be their buyer of first resort, their buyer of last resort. We can consume every available electron and then shut off within a few moments notice if they need to sell back to the grid and finding a way to align incentives where we can be their partner so if you owned a, a wind farm in Texas that you're selling into the grid at negative pricing, you might actually want to deploy a little bit of ground next to your 34.5 collector substation and deploy your own Bitcoin mining operation to consume some of that electricity. Instead of spilling it or curtailing it into negative pricing, you could actually mine Bitcoin with it. But are you a, you, you own a solar or wind farm. You're not a Bitcoin mining expert. Well, we are. That's actually a service that we're happy to provide is we can come in and help you monitor your infrastructure. For those listening who are interested, I have two questions. One of them is who is a client who should consider Accelerated by Compass? Like what is a client avatar? And maybe that actually has to do with the particular managed service that they're looking for. And then the other one is where are these services available? Are these services just available in North America, being at least the US and Canada? Or if somebody's interested and they have a Bitcoin mine going in another part of the world, is there support that we could offer? Is there expertise that we could offer? And so I know I've just asked two questions, but uh, Shannon, I'd like to actually go to you about the avatar and the client. So who is the avatar for some of these services, all of these services, who are we really looking to support and who would be kind of an ideal uh, customer for us? Basically, any aspect in which you're considering the Bitcoin mining farm, there's going to be something you don't already know how to do, right? So maybe you're the energy expert, you've been able to cite a location, you've been able to do that part, but you need help securing hardware, you need help securing containers or wrapping the CEUs, or uh, maybe the part is you can do that, but you don't have operations. Um, so you've never actually operated a Bitcoin mining farm or the largest farm you've operated was your upstead in your backyard, like where I got started. Um, and so going from that to operating, you know, 10 megawatts, 20 megawatts or higher, uh, or even just the networking side. So there's going to be a piece you don't know. So whenever you're asking that question of like, how do I solve for this next piece? Or maybe the question is, I don't know what I need to solve for yet because I haven't done this before. Um, if you're asking yourself those questions, that's where we want to step in, right? We've already, uh, I mean, it's true. we've already made the mistakes or we've worked with the people who have made the mistakes. We've corrected the mistakes. We've learned how to avoid them in the future. Uh, I'm sure we'll find more 
there's always something that's going to be changing or different. Um, so as far as that client profile, I would say uh, it, it kind of depends on where you're getting started. You're just dipping yourself into mining. Um, you're probably not the person who's looking at, uh, you know, building your own first site. And so in that situation, it's probably more interesting to just go look at our marketplace and, you know, get started with mining from a hosting relationship. If maybe you have some miners hosted in a few places or you have a large you know, quantity of miners hosted in a few places, contract rending and you want to move them into your own facility so you can either reduce costs, control your own destiny, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, that's a client that we want to deal with. Or, you know, maybe I need infrastructure, I need to get it in from China, it's over there, how do I get it here? So just logistics management, shipping, you know, just about any service that you can think of within the space. If you say, hey, how do I do that? We can answer that question. There's, you know, there's a lot more context to add there. We we actually bring value, just as Shannon described, in, in whatever stage of development you are in the Bitcoin mining uh, uh, journey, we have some expertise. So if you're willing to engage with us, um, you know, like we, you know, we're fully transparent and talk through what the opportunities are, how we could potentially work together. Uh, we're happy actually to just share, you know, good information, best practices, contacts across the industry. But I'll think of a, of a, of a couple different options. So think of, a, of an investor, a hedge fund, a family office. They're excited about Bitcoin. They have capital to deploy. And they were, they've been buying Bitcoin. They've been following Michael Saylor and the micro strategy strategy. And, and you know, they got money into ETFs. And they finally figured out that mining creates the you know, lowest marginal cost to acquire Bitcoin. And they want to have some exposure to Bitcoin. Bitcoin mining. So they put together, you know, one, five, ten million dollars and they're ready to deploy it into Bitcoin mining. How are they going to do that? That's the going from zero to one is pretty substantial there. So partnering with an organization who has real experience and knows they know what the challenges are and they know how to solve for those challenges with actually, you know, um, marketable, actionable projects that we can we can work on. So that's a perfect example. I, I mentioned both sides of a marketplace. We commonly see this other side. We see folks who have a site. They've they've you know they're excited about Bitcoin. They're what Shannon mentioned an energy professional. They they understand that there's you know um, uh, stranded energy at this substation wherever it is. Uh, and that they're, you know, they've gotten a lease on the ground, they've been talking to container manufacturers, but then they've realized that there's actually a lot of hard work that they don't have expertise in. So they start looking, okay, well, who can come into my site? Well, the ability to come in and take down a large site requires a substantial amount of capital. And that could be the exact other side of the type of, um, you know, hedge fund family office um, you know, institutional size customers that we're working with, they they have capital that they're trying to deploy in Bitcoin mining, but they're only going to do it one with trusted partners and two into choice locations. And that's us. We we are we are vetting for choice locations and understand the parameters. Um, so I, I hope that was additional context that was helpful, Jarrett. That was super helpful. And Curtis, where is this just uh, bound to the US and Canada where we currently have our facilities or is Accelerated by Compass a managed service that people could access from outside of those locations? Yeah, we we want to try to bring a resource to anyone. You know, we don't have uh, we we don't have uh, operations you know internationally yet. We've had some experience internationally and have found out the hard way that there's sometimes challenges uh, with you know operating in jurisdictions that you don't have quite as much regulatory control. But if you're in uh, in, in South America and you're wanting to get into Bitcoin mining, it's really going to take personal relationships, personal local relationships. But and so that's what you have to start with. And then it's always all going to come down to low cost of energy. Have you identified an energy source? And Shannon might not know the the energy profile in uh, in Brazil or Colombia. However, he does substantially know the electrical infrastructure and what it takes to get um, you know, uh, mining container, containers, modular data centers, and hardware, and PDUs, and switches, and everything that's necessary for setup. Like we could actually just fully design uh, a site for you, and would would, would be happy to. Um, then, if they're depending on the scale, is we're we're very interested in operating internationally. That would be a nice way for us to expand is with a trusted partner. So, if you have a, a site that you're growing internationally, and you've heard something in today's conversation that uh, that you liked, we would be happy to talk to you and see if there's a way that we could bring value. Amazing. Shannon, do, are you going to add something? Yeah, no, I th and I think it's important to kind of uh, put this bound on it too, right? Like obviously U.S., we do a lot of that. Canada, we you know can handle that. And 
when we look outside of the kind of North American borders there and we spread out into the rest of the country, like we have already started to vet and look into opportunities, right? So there are things there, there are things on the table, but it's about knowing that like, what have I done before? What am I good at doing? You know, what can our company do and execute on you know, well? Like any of those sites, yeah, we can set up, you know, we can fly people out, we can train technicians, we can teach them how to repair miners, fix miners, operate a farm, set up a network um, and do that part of it, no problem. The piece that Curtis there mentioned about the relationships would be like, okay, when it comes to actually doing, you know, dirt work and laying cabling and all that kind of stuff, being able to have those local connections to find, you know, the actual physical labor on site in those other countries would be the area where we're needing to, you know, work with those relationships and, you know, develop a little there. So we know where, uh, you know, in the U.S., we have lots of resources for that. Canada has quite a few resources for that. Stepping into other countries, you know, that's where it starts to be a bit of a limit, but it doesn't mean we can't go help someone find and execute on those things as well. So putting together all the pieces, landing, you know, modular data centers, landing transformers, you know, training operating staff, all those pieces are easy. Even in lay, adding in that extra layer of like remote support. So we have a pretty robust, essentially remote operations team that we use both in-house and for our third party. This allows us to monitor the mining farms around the clock. It allows us to do remote resets, allows us to do a lot of remote troubleshooting and aggregate a lot of the work remotely so that you don't have to have 24 seven staffing on site. So guys can work a bit more regular shifts, get up, go to work, have, you know, the daily report sitting there for them. Hey, these are the miners that need additional troubleshooting, hard reset. These ones need control board fix. These ones need power supply fix. And you can go out and do that. So we can add in layers on top of that of uh, services that we provide and continue to provide to those sites as well. Jared, I, I heard something from Shannon there that I just, uh, I, I want to like shine a light on. Um, and it, you know, what I would, what I would call is just, you know, all facts and no gloss. You asked me a question and I certainly found a way for us just to be appealing to any sort of, you know, profile, you know, international. Sure. Let's look at it together. Um, I love the fact that I work so closely with Shannon who just, if, if something isn't going to work for you, he tells you that directly. If there's a problem, uh, it's there, there's, there's no gloss. It's all facts. And, and yeah, we're probably going to be able to ideate on solutions and to help you overcome problems. Problems, but to have a partner who is knowledgeable and experienced and able to speak, you know, speak truth, right? To, be, to show where there's a problem and to articulate it, articulate it quickly is a tremendous value. So I heard myself get a little glossy and Shannon uh, dial me back to, uh, uh, yeah, that sounds good, but let's, let's, uh, let's look at the facts also. Uh, it, okay. it, it, it's the best because like I said, Curtis can actually articulate things in a, a way where everybody can understand them. And uh, whereas I'm not always the, the best of that. So it's a good duo for us to be together. It is. Um, Curtis, let's take the gloss off. It's okay. 2024. It's May, second quarter, the fifth epoch. What are some of the challenges that you are currently foreseeing in 2024 that, you know, accelerated by compass are just going to hit the nail on the head? I, I think hash rate's going to continue to come online. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm Bitcoin forever, up and to the right forever. And I think the same goes for hash rate. So I think new people are going to continue to bring miners online. And, you know, likely they're going to be paying attention to fleet management, retiring older equipment. So that creates an opportunity when you have older equipment and you pull it offline, it needs to go somewhere. So there's going to be someone on the other end of that, usually even a couple times where, hey, uh, we didn't have this, this, um, these, miners before but now we do what do we do with them well here's an opportunity do we have a relationship with someone who has you know a lower uptime percentage maybe they have a time of use structure where you can still mine with older equipment so um uh, that that's one example of you know older generation equipment coming offline people needing help deploying it but my real answer was around um people are going to continue to try to plug in miners and here's what we know is jared it's hard um, uh, Bitcoin mining is hard and um, you you might be excited about it like I was and you know like Shannon was and um, you might go and try and you're going to run into some challenges and when you've run into some challenges and you start looking at what your oper oper operational constraints are and what it is is standing in your way of the success that you wanted or the growth that you want you're more than likely going to be looking for people to help you solve some of those some of those challenges and we want to stand uh, in front of that as an opportunity if you're if you're trying to build on bitcoin we have value and services to provide you shannon i want to throw you a similar 
question about challenges in 2024 and let's focus on energy as what Curtis says is likely to be true. More and more miners coming online, more and more people interested the attention, maybe that the price brings as more attention comes in, more miners come online, talk to the audience about some energy concerns that accelerated by compass can absolutely uh, help to solve. I think the biggest piece is there's not necessarily enough infrastructure built, right? So as we go through and look at sites, like you see the headline news of, you know, large 100 megawatt, 200 megawatt, 600 megawatt sites, depending on the pub code that's putting those together. Um, that's not readily available. Like there were a handful of large uh, pieces of energy that were here and there. Um, now you have to, if you want to get something like that, you're bringing a substation. Uh, like you've seen that with what you see Iris, I think they're now Irene you know, 600 megawatt substation, you gotta see the long process of what it takes to procure and build and go through that and finally get miners online and go through that process. So if you want a large amount of power, you're gonna be in that world and looking at a longer lead time. So if you haven't already started that process, uh, then, you know, you have a bit of a learning curve there. We like to focus uh, personally on finding that, the rest of the stranded power, right? The power that's not being monetized by someone. So whether that's a, solar farm that's producing, or like Curtis mentioned earlier, a wind farm that's bidding negative in the market, or an underutilized substation here or there, finding these pockets of energy in markets that already have known advantageous power rates, and be able to, you know, bring that to fruition. So whether that's a site for ourselves and our clients for hosting, or, you know, it becomes for a third party site by Accelerated by Compass, those are kind of the targets we're looking at. And there's a lot of other people looking for these targets. So I think access to uh, the access to power is one thing. But then actually that infrastructure being put together. So once you identify, hey, this substation has this extra amount of load that's available, well, how do I get that load to site? Have I been able to purchase a piece of property nearby? Or am I running cable for 300 miles to get that? Am I, like, do I have the transformers? Uh, we've seen it multiple times when Bitcoin mining becomes super popular as Bitcoin price runs up. All the transformers get bought up for a bunch of different projects, and now there's none available to buy. The prices go up. Same thing with, you know, containerized data centers. There's a whole bunch of containerized data centers that go for, you know, super low prices because they're sitting in the U.S., sitting around, you know, not being used. But as soon as they all get purchased and everybody starts running full steam because Bitcoin's run up and now everybody wants to be a Bitcoin miner, everything gets expensive. And so that's one of the things we try to manage and mitigate through various vendor relationships, both in the U.S. and overseas, to be able to make sure that there's a good supply chain of hardware um, so that hopefully we can mitigate some of that process. Obviously, we're now also looking at an era in which we used to see, you know, Bitcoin miners putting in, you know, for large loads, large interconnections. Now we also have other traditional data centers, AI data centers, HPC, putting in for these large loads, large interconnections. Because of that, we see a lot of the ISOs, the utilities, the markets, FERC, and some other regulators that are actually like, oh, no, what are we going to do with all these large requests? How can we actually serve these requests? We don't have the, you know, generation assets. We don't have the transmission assets. We don't have the distribution assets. And so I think that that's just going to be, you know, continuing to roll forward as you be able to find those. And uh, a group of people that I, I think may be underserved still are people that are looking, you know, okay, yeah, I can go look for this low-hanging fruit that's available today. I might be a premium for it because I have access to power quickly. But that next subset of people that go, hey, this is going to be a long-term thing. They're like Curtis. They're looking into the future. They, you know, expect hash rate to keep growing just like I do. Difficulty is going to go up forever. We need to keep plugging in all that stuff. You know, looking at the sites now, okay, how do I work with generating assets who can spin up more power production if they had an offload? And then work with them and figure out, okay, in between, we're missing transmission. We're missing, you know, distribution. We're missing substation or this or that. Um, so I think those are going to be some of the problems we run into long-term. Immediate. It's just about, you know, how quickly can I move miners and get them plugged in, right? That's just an ongoing problem in Bitcoin mining. It doesn't matter if it's a bull run or a bear market. There's miners sitting somewhere that aren't energized. And I think that's always the number one problem. And that always get, it only gets worse if Bitcoin price increases, right? So, uh, and you see, you know, information about that all the time from various entities here and there. And I think those are probably the biggest things that I worry about is, you know, can we, can we lock up enough? you know, sites that are low hanging fruit to be able to put together for all the demand that's going to be there. And then at what point do um, clients and entities realize, hey, we got to take that next step and realize the site's going to take me 18 to 24 months to build out instead of that, you know, 90 to 120 day project if we're looking at Greenfield. So hope that answers your question a little bit. 
Guys, I, I, I want to share something, and I, I don't want to be alarmist, but there's a having coming in just 47 months. Uh, the Bitcoin reward is going to be cut in half soon. And, uh, there, you know, we think Bitcoin mining is competitive. The, the you know, artificial intelligence demand that Shannon mentioned, um, they, they bring a new form of competition to energy, Jared. They're, um, they're, they don't have the, you know, price sensitivity to electricity costs that Bitcoin miners do. And they also have more capital to, you know, acquire uh, uh, sites and infrastructure. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of competition on the ground for today's energy profile, uh, much less what the future looks like. It's, just to kind of talk a little bit about that, I think it's kind of important to note the different energy profile between like AI, HPC, and Bitcoin mining. Generally speaking, you know, Bitcoin mining is an interruptible load, right? We have the ability to shut off because our network is distributed and decentralized. If one mining farm shuts off or even an entire country of mining farms shuts off, it doesn't kill Bitcoin, right? When China exodus happened and all the hash rates shut off, it didn't kill Bitcoin. It just relocated while other miners kept doing the work. Um, and so when we think about the, uh, you know, other levels of compute where they need to have higher uptime. So maybe if you're running inference, you can do some interruptibility, maybe not. Maybe the workload you have requires a large level of uptime. You're going to be looking at different types of power sources. So that's one thing that's still unique to Bitcoin mining is that, you know, we are interruptible. So for those generators who have maybe a, a intermittent load, right? With like solar, wind, things like that, or you just have excess power, but the markets could go crazy and you want to take advantage of that. That's where we can work like directly together with the generators, the transmission providers, whereas a, you know, a load like HTC AI that may have to be on with five nines of uptime, it's going to have a much different profile than us. Curtis, I'm going to go ahead and leave both your and Shannon's emails in the episode description if people want to reach out to you. But I would love to give you a chance to tell people where they can learn more about Accelerated by Compass and then reach out if they are absolutely in need of some of these managed services. Because I'm, you know, a pretty sensitive guy, I can tell you're trying to bring this podcast to a close. But before I do, I, I want to I want to turn the tables and I, I want to say to you, Jared, you're doing a great job. Um, Compass has finally gotten to the spot. We've been building quietly, um, fixing, you know, uh, problems, overcoming challenges, like serving our customers. So for the last couple of years, we've not been as public of a voice as we were um, uh, previously. And, you know, now I've seen you active over, even over the last few weeks, um, we're, we're re-engaging with content, we're recording new conversations, and this is one of those examples. Um, and I just wanna tell you, you're, you're doing a great job speaking on behalf of Compass and on, on, on behalf of our customers. Do you have some other upcoming podcasts that you're looking forward to? What's, what's in the pipe for you? Yes, yeah, so we are gonna have on one of our, our biggest writer, I shouldn't say one of our biggest writers, we have two writers that create amazing content for us at Compass and Anthony Power will be up next and then still trying to lock down people as we get into the future. One of the things that is a plus and a negative about creating content around Bitcoin mining is that people are busy. And that's a good thing, right? Because the Bitcoin network doesn't sleep. And so we need to make sure that these, you know, miners are online for everyone's benefit. But the downside of that is sometimes it's really hard to align schedules. And so I'm kind of running into that, but that's okay. That's a, that is a good problem to have. And yeah, looking forward, we have some, some pretty big people coming up uh, who are going to hop on and, you know, talk about Bitcoin mining and talk about really the future of this decentralized global network. So if, if you need some help getting through or getting on people's calendars, you should definitely leverage Shannon or myself is that we want to be um, helpful. We, we want to bring meaningful educational conversations to our customers. And I'm so excited um, that, that you're doing that and you're doing a, a great job. You, you did ask uh, about where to learn more about Accelerated by Compass. So our, our website, we're at compassmining.io. You can, you can throw in the complicated part of, you know, forward slash accelerated. Uh, um, uh, but it, actually, there's a banner on the front of our, on the front of our webpage. So you, you can find us at compassmining.io. Uh, there's good information there. There's a web form you can complete. Give us some basic information. Uh, when you hit send on that web form, that actually goes to Shannon and I. So you get to see us both, and we're able to... Uh, I stand there and, and look at what information you want to share. And if you just want to have a call, like I'm, I'm widely available. I'm, I'm in central time. I live in Kansas. I do this all day long. I love talking Bitcoin mining. So if you're trying to build a Bitcoin mining site and you need a little bit of connectivity to flush through some ideas, we want to be available to you. Absolutely. Well, 
Shannon and Curtis, thank you for hopping on here and sharing all about Accelerated by Compass. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening on a podcast platform, please go ahead and subscribe. You can follow us on X, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube at Compass Mining. Shannon, Curtis, thank you so much for taking the time. And it's exciting. The hash is growing, as you said, Curtis. It's going up and to the right. And there's no better time for Honestly Accelerated by Compass to be here for the industry. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Jared. Next time we need to hop on and we need to talk about like why this was such a soft bear market and why this was such a soft having. Like, I think it, people got it too easy right now. We need to rewind it and let them experience some of the hard times. Okay, we'll do that. And as Curtis reminded us, we're 47 months out from the next having. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. <laughs>